It's little wonder that Great Britain is home to a National Maritime Museum. For centuries, their Navy was the largest and strongest on Earth, and their trade ships controlled the seven seas. One of their most frequent routes was to the land down under, Australia. And that's where we head now, to witness a miracle of human kindness captured on videotape. It started early one morning when lighthouse keeper Wayne Kelly walked down to a lookout and discovered 49 whales stranded on the beach. They're strung out along the beach just underneath the lighthouse. A pitiful sight. Uh, it was quite devastating really because it's something that you don't expect. As you can see, some are still moving, so they are still alive. We then came back and phoned the police before everyone got here, I grabbed our video camera. It appears to be a baby. Such a disturbing sight looking back up the beach with all these beautiful whales. I think every radio station in Australia contacted us on the phone that morning. To reveal 50 whales, the false killer species, strewn along the sands, 49, all struggling for life. The immensity of the rescue operation became apparent. They'll certainly need uh, many volunteers. The radio reports brought a handful of local volunteers racing to the beach. Rowan Peterson Shaw was among them. It was a desperate sort of a feeling. There were very few people there at the time, and whales just stranded, and you didn't know what to do. While Rowan concentrated on one of the larger whales, her father was busy with a smaller calf. And they tried to put that one out. And he swam out and then he, but he turned around and then came straight back in again and, and then he ran right over me. It just looked like a torpedo coming in through the surf. Frank Peterson returned to the calf, unsure of what to do. By now, hundreds of people had found their way to the beach, hoping to help. But returning the whales to the water would not be an easy feat. Expert Kerry Hayes Lovell explains. The only way to successfully get them out is to get them out in a large group. You cannot do it on your own, and we do not have enough professionals that could just handle a mass stranding. Any volunteers up there with wetsuits would they like and want to come and join, help the whales in the water? Would they like to come and see me now, please? The several days I was there, there was over a thousand people. The volunteers were instructed to keep the whales wet, to sit with them and comfort them while they prepared for a mass release. It was a group effort, and everyone pitched in, from young to old, including many military personnel. Ranger John Callahan was one of the leaders. We couldn't attempt to release the whales back from that beach. We needed to find another beach that was um, less exposed to potential heavy seas. It was decided that we would move them around the point to the other side where we had calm weather conditions. For the next two days, they slowly and carefully transported the whales to the other, more protected side of the peninsula, where they were finally able to carry them into the waters and release them into several large groups. Ladies and gentlemen, just to reiterate, uh, I'd just like to thank you very much. I don't want anyone to go yet if you wouldn't mind, just in case we have a problem with this pod coming back onto the beach. It was the third day, the morning of the third day, that we released the final group of whales. So it was a tremendous reward for all the volunteers that had worked there. It was such a relief to know that these animals were finally free. I thought, 
felt very proud that I individually had saved all these whales and sent them off back to sea. I thought I'd seen most things, but I hadn't ever seen or felt anything like that, that, that before. It was a, an enlightening feeling, just like you were 10 foot high. Those little puffs as they were almost saying goodbye as they uh, made their way out to sea. Or perhaps they were saying thank you for the miracle that set them free.